we begin, um, we would like you to sign into our Pear Deck. Um, so you would go to joinpd.com on your phone, or you, I guess you could also use a computer as well, but a phone's pretty handy. So go to joinpd.com on your phone, and there is the code uh, there. So log in while you're there. Yeah, have fun. Also, I do want to say um, if people do come in a little bit later and they are a little bit confused because I probably won't check the chat too much. So can you maybe tell them the code? The code will be up on the top right corner of the screen. Maybe I'll, yeah. That would be great. If anyone's having a hard time getting in, you can just let me know in the chat and I can share the link again or the code. Or I can also give you the link as well. There is that as well. Nice. <clears throat> If you just joined us, um, this is the uh, Pear Deck code, I guess. Uh, so we'd like you to, because this presentation is interactive, we would like you to interact with us. And we're going to do this through something called Pear Deck. Uh, so join our Pear Deck by going to joinpd.com. And it'll ask you for the code. It, the code for this session is EQUFAN. Patrick, do you know how much people we have in right now? We currently have 21. Okay. So there's only about six people who haven't gotten in yet. So if you need help getting in, you can just let us know in the chat. Um, okay, it's 8.30, so I think we should be good to get started. Um, I'm posting the same link po Patrick posted one more time. Throughout the presentation, if any of you are having a hard time getting in, you can just post in the chat and Patrick or I will try and respond to you. Yes, and the code is up on the top right corner, if you can see, so you can um, join from there if you put there. So, all right. So uh, welcome everyone. Um, yeah, so thank you to the organizers for letting us talk about our social media at Pestle Ontario. Um, this presentation, as James said, was Let's Get Social, a review of social media and member engagement strategies. So uh, as James also said, my name is Patrick Chan. I am Pestle Ontario's social content committee chair. And I'm Colleen Taylor, and I'm the manager of member engagement and communications. Patrick, you're muted. Why am I muted? There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> anyways, anyways, so both of us are uh, lead a huge team of, of volunteers in Petzl Ontario's um, social media. Okay, so on your device, please drag your dots and place in on the scale to indicate whether you agree or disagree with the statement below. I want to engage more with my organization's social media. Hi, Grazia. Oh my gosh, um, we're gonna talk about Tesla Dialogue later and Grazia, who's here in the chat, was our very first um, subject matter expert. So Grazia, it's so nice to see you. 
So on your Pear Deck screens, you should be able to drag that little dot either to the left to indicate that yes, or to the right to indicate no. Awesome. So I'm going to show everyone's responses in a couple of seconds, maybe five more seconds. Mm -hmm. No problem. Take your time. And remember, if for some reason you're not able to participate through Pear Deck, you can just let us know in the chat too, because I'm keeping an eye on that. Great. So let me show everyone's responses. Uh, so this is what everyone said. So most people do want to engage more with their organization's social media, uh, which is really great because today, hopefully, you'll be able to learn uh, some things. Thank you. Um, I have a request to post a link again. So Patrick, can you just give me one second? Sorry, everybody. Right. I'm just gonna copy and paste that link one more time in the chat so everyone who's coming in will have access to it. So here's the link and if you need to know um, the code, it's at the top right hand side. It's EQU space FAN for the code. Okay. All right. So, what is Tesla Ontario? Well, actually, it's a really awesome organization that was established in 1972. So, we've been here for quite some time. And it's a nonprofit that focuses on ELT, English Language Teaching or Training. And we're based in Ontario, Canada. However, we do have members from all over Canada and internationally as well. And the great thing about us is that we try and address topics that really influence the success of important English language learners, like immigrants, refugees, um, international students, and any other English language learner that is in Canada. So that's a lot of what we do. You're muted. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right. I don't know what's happening. My computer is playing. Anyways, all right. So um, Tesla Ontario social media is, is not just the two of us. It's a huge team. Um, if it was just the two of us, just Colleen and I, I would cry because it's a lot of work. So um, we have this huge team. Uh, we have platform managers. So we, so we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And we have a manager in each of these platforms who interacts with the people there on each of the platforms. But we also have uh, volunteer teams like a webinar team, a blog team, a video editing team, Tesla Dialogue, Tesla Exchange, and a YouTube team as well. So as you can imagine, there's this huge team we work all together to uh, make Tesla Ontario social media what it is. And so everyone here works really well together, I think, I hope we do, I think we do. And we have just push, pushing out the mission of getting out things uh, for our members. So what do we do on our social media? So we try to get out information or we communicate to our members. Uh, we can talk about um, our conference. We have an annual conference uh, this year, it's happening in November of 2021. We also um, pro uh, promote any affiliate um, events as well. So Tesla Ontario has, I think, 12 affiliates. So we also promote those um, events as well. We do stuff like uh, provide resources for people. Uh, we talk about membership. We, we talk we also uh, provide some people with job opportunities or volunteer opportunities. And talk, we have accreditation, any announcements we have, um, any important announcements, we provide that as well. And anything of interest, basically. So anything that our, our community would, we think that would be interesting, we post it on our social media. So um, on, your, um, on your phones, you might be directed to our uh, Instagram. So you might have to push on agree, um, answer question. I don't know why it's answer question, that's fine. And then click on the link and you'll be able to see our Instagram. So there's that. Um, so what has worked on our platform is a having a brand. So, in all of our social media, we have a, some aesthetic that we try to uh, push 
out to people. And so when people are scrolling through their feeds, uh, they can see, uh, oh, this, this post is a Tesla Ontario post. I'm going to take a couple of seconds to look at it because it's very recognizable. Um, we try very hard to make it kind of consistent. And so people already immediately recognize what our posts look like. We also know that um, each individual platform has different demographics and different, a different population. So people on Twitter might not be on Instagram or people on Instagram might not be on LinkedIn, for example. So um, we cater towards that specific demographic on all of our social media. So like I said, we are on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. What has also worked on our platforms is having campaigns. So every month, each of our platforms has a specific campaign that we like to run. So for example, on Twitter, every month we have uh, Tesla on chat. Um, that's where someone, um, someone in our member, in our membership, um, moderates a Twitter chat with the members. Uh, we also have Tesla inspired on our Instagram account. Uh, where we interview an inspiring Tesla member. So it's kind of like a talk show type of thing. Um, on LinkedIn, we have Employment Wednesdays, where once a month we offer and we start, we offer any advice on employment, but we also start a conversation. And this month, we're going to start a Monday motivation on Facebook where we try to motivate our members. So as you can see, we have four different um, campaigns on these platforms, and we are trying to target, again, people um, through these platforms. So um, we, know, we know that people on Instagram, maybe they are a little bit younger, so, and maybe they would like to be inspired. So we have Tesla inspired. And we know that maybe someone in Facebook, maybe it's more experienced, so, and they would like to be motivated once again. So there is that for them there. So we try to, we try to cater towards all the, um, all the Tesla members because we have a lot of members. So the next question I have here is, it is very important to engage members in many different ways. So you have three choices. Um, can you please answer um, with your phones? And again, if for some reason you can't get onto um, Pear Deck, the options are yes, no, or I'm not sure. So if you'd like to type that in the chat, please feel free. Okay, so in the chat, we have two yeses, one from, please uh, correct me if I pronounce your name wrong, but Jay, Liz, Stephanie, oh gosh, Emily Anova, uh, Cherry Lynn, Larissa, Janelle, and Zainab. So a lot of yeses, I'm so happy to see that. How are we doing on Pear Deck, Patrick? We have all the yeses, basically. No one is saying no or not sure. So that's really good that everyone is saying yes. Uh, yeah, that's great, yes. So yeah, so a lot, a lot of people think it's important to engage mem members in many different ways. And at Tesla Ontario, we try our best to do that. Um, so we do that in many different ways. One way that we do that is we use social media in many different ways because we know that uh, people um, interact and engage with social media in many different ways. For example, some people only look at the stories whereas other people like to scroll down to their feeds. So we offer two different ways of um, getting any information that we're trying to offer, either through the stories on Instagram or Facebook, for example. And we also post as well. So we offer two different things. 
uh, for the members. Um, another thing that we do is we have um, month, every month we try to offer at least two webinars. Um, so the webinars is approximately one hour long, but we also understand that our members are busy. They cannot attend a one hour webinar. So in that case, we offer something called Pestle Exchange. Pestle Exchange is a place where uh, someone would share a, maybe a tip or a trick, which is five-ish minutes, 15-ish uh, maybe. Um, and they just offer these tips and tricks. So it's a really short uh, video that members can watch at any time that they want to because it's on YouTube. So if they can't access the webinars, that there's something, that there's Tesla Exchange. Also, if people are missing that interactive aspect, I know during this, specifically this time, people are missing that interactive aspect. Uh, we have something called Tesla Dialogue, uh, where you can actually interact with the subject, um, ex subject matter expert. So it's not just a one-way thing like a webinar or an exchange, which some people do enjoy. Um, but if you are missing that kind of interactive component, there is Tesla dialogue for you. So we have different things for different people. And I think that's very important. But can I jump in here? Sure. I just want to give a big shout out to a couple of our volunteers in the audience. For Tesla Exchange, we have Paramita. She's our Tesla Exchange manager, and she does an amazing job. For Tesla Dialogue, uh, sorry, Tesla Exchange as well, Gunnel, I cannot forget Gunnel. She's an absolutely fantastic member of our team. And for Tesla Dialogue, we have Loretta. She's our manager there, and she does an absolutely fantastic job. And like I mentioned earlier, Grazie had, had been our first subject matter expert at Tesla Dialogue, and Jim also has been a subject matter expert as well. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who helps Tesla Ontario, because without you wonderful people, we wouldn't have this high quality of engagement. So thank you all so much. Yes, we would be crying. Colleen and I would be crying 100%. So thank you so much to everyone involved. Like I, this is a team effort. And with this team, we're able to provide all of these awesome things. Uh, without the team, I would cry, cry every day. So if, and if you do want to check out, if you do want to check out anything that we have, Tesla Exchange, and I think our Tesla Dialogue is on YouTube. So please check that out if you have the time or if you're interested. That's something uh, there as well. Okay, so the next thing that we have is an a question that we would like you to answer. You can also answer in the chat, but you can also answer on the Pear Deck. Um, so my question for you is what tools or apps do you use within your social media team? Oh, some of these answers are really good. Oh, I'm on mute. I was saying I'm excited to hear them. Yeah. I think we need to check some of these out, Colleen. These are awesome. I'll give you about a minute to uh, write your answers. Um, while we're waiting, were there any questions in the chat that maybe we can answer? No, no I've been keeping it. Questions. I've been keeping an eye on the chat. It's just people being lovely and nice and saying thank you. No questions. Well, thank you for all everyone <laughs> being lovely and nice. We appreciate it a lot. While I have you here though, I will be posting some links to uh, our YouTube channel where we have Tesla Exchange and Tesla Dialogue. If any of you would like to check it out, if any of your affiliates would like to be featured in a video um, because you wanna talk about your affiliate chapter or you have something to share with our audience, we're more than happy to see that. Tesla Ontario has really recently wanted to start collaborating with other organizations. So please feel free to reach out. At the end of this presentation, you'll see both Patrick, Patrick's uh, contact info and mine as well. So please 
please, if you have any kind of ideas for collaboration, we're more than happy and willing to see that. Yes, please bring it. We're, we're more than willing, more than willing. Okay, a lot of people, let's look at some of the answers. If you're still, if you're still writing, that's fine. You can still continue to write, but we'll just look at some of the answers here. So we have someone using Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Flipgrid, Padlet. Those are pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, TweetDeck, that's pretty interesting. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, yes. So everyone's using Facebook, that's pretty awesome. But here we have Final Cut Pro and Canva, interesting. Uh, Slack, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Hootsuite, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Google Docs, that's interesting. Um, LinkedIn, Facebook, so it makes everyone on Facebook, it seems. That's pretty awesome. If you're, if you're not following us on Facebook, please follow us. You, that's okay. Hopefully you can learn a couple of things here. YouTube, YouTube, awesome. So yeah, that's quite awesome, yeah. So uh, what we use at Tessel Ontario are three things. We use Slack, Hootsuite, and Canva. So let me tell you a little bit about these three things. So we use Slack to communicate and we as a team communicate often, often, like almost daily. So Colleen and I, as well as all the other um, um, social content committee members are talking to each other daily, like I said. And I think that's one, one thing why we are so successful because we always have a constant stream of communication. If someone has a problem, we're shooting that out as, a, as a, on the Slack channel and someone is answering. Um, and that's, that's awesome. Uh, we could use email, but I personally get hundreds of emails, not because I'm popular, most of it's spam, uh, but uh, I get, they easily get lost. With Slack, things don't get lost as easily. So I think that if we if you use Slack, it's easier for people to communicate with each other. And also Slack has a way where we can communicate not only with the entire team, but with just one individual too. Um, so for example, if Colleen has a question that's just geared for, towards me, she could ask me that question and I can. We also use Hootsuite. Uh, Hootsuite, if you don't know, is a, um, an app or a website, I guess, uh, where you can schedule your social media posts across the platforms. And it's really useful because we know that our volunteers are busy sometimes and they can't post every single day. So what they can do instead is use Hootsuite and post all for the week, for example. And then during the week, they can concentrate on engaging with people and liking or commenting instead of posting. So save you time. Um, and we also use Canva as well. Uh, so you can see all of the uh, graphics here. Th those ones weren't made by Canva, but uh, most of our um, members, members, our volunteers use Canva as well. If you're not familiar with Canva, it is a place where you can make uh, professional uh, graphics and you can just plug in the pictures or the text that you want and it will be there for you. And what's great about Canva is there's a free version and there's a paid version. The free version is pretty good. Um, so you don't really need to pay. And pretty awesome right there. Yeah. So I'm going to turn this presentation over to Colleen now. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Okay, no everybody. Worries. So in Pear Deck, if you could please answer this question, what are some things that you currently do to try and find collaborators? When we say collaborators, we mean presenters, guests, subject matter experts, contributors in any fashion. Um, so please in the Pear Deck, if you could answer this question. Remember, if you don't have access to Pear Deck, you can always write your response in the chat because I'm checking that as well. 
In the meantime, though, I just want to give a big shout out. I see Janelle is here. Janelle is part of our Tesla Niagara affiliate. So hello, Janelle. I hope you're doing well. And Allison Kewen, our executive director, is here too of Tesla Ontario. So I have to say hello and thank you so much for joining us. We got to give Allison a round of applause in the chat because without her, we wouldn't be able to do any of this awesome stuff that you see. So I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that Tesla Ontario is such a wonderful association. We all have so much love and dedication for this field. And that's why we have so much fun and we're able to accomplish so much together. Yep. So like I said, it's a team. It's a, it's a team. It's not just me. If it, like I said, I would cry. Cry. <laughs> cry. But no. Thankfully, I don't have to cry because we have such amazing volunteers and guidance with everything that we're doing. So yeah. it's a team. It's a yeah. huge team. Yep, yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, Patrick, what is Pear Deck looking like? Nice. It is looking pretty good. Let's see what people's answers are. So attend webinars, forums, conferences, and other virtual events. Uh, TESOL International Network of Friends and Colleagues in Latin America and Caribbean TESOL. Oh, that's pretty good. Chris, wow. Let's go to TESOL. Oh, I went to look on the website. <laughs> uh, go to the conference, collab with university advisors. So if you don't know, I have, I'm, I'm controlling this, the Pear Deck on my phone and accidentally clicked on the. It's URL. okay. We can't see it. We only see the Pear Deck still. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. But just like, why did I stop talking? Not for this one. <laughs> Call proposal, interviews, research on social media and on face-to-face -face conversations, using networks, reaching out to members, connect with individuals on social media, add requests in our Monday memo. Oh, that's awesome. Post webinars for our members and non-members. Ask colleagues first. Uh, networking. I just ask. That's awesome. Pressure and guilt. Oh that's no. That's my favorite tactic. My favorite one. That's I think how I got Jim, right, Jim? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do use pressure and guilt as well. That's how I got involved with Tesla Ontario. So hey, it works. It works. Uh, look for volunteers with passion, time, and skills. Post recruitment sessions. Um, attend virtual events, webinars, workshops. Reach out on social media. That's awesome. Making connections between organizations. Wow. So this person is involved with many organizations. Ooh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is very good. Our LinkedIn has... A lot of members, our LinkedIn and our Facebook has a lot of members uh, because it's one of the it's one of the, the well-established ones. Our newer platforms like our Facebook and our Instagram, we don't have many members there, but that's because it's new. So we're hoping to build that up in the future. Uh, but LinkedIn, yeah, for sure, that's what we do. Personal contacts. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, thank you so much. So I think, yeah, I think many of you already touched on a lot of what I'm going to talk about, but I'm just gonna give a little bit more uh, details. So the first thing I wanna talk about is reaching out to friends of the organization. And what I call those people are, for example, our past presenters. As we, as we mentioned earlier, we do a lot of webinars. That was one of our first uh, P, forms of PD that was really well established. And so we can go all the way back to, I think, 2015 um, with some of our presenters. And so often, you know, the people that you know are the best people to reach out to when you need new presenters. And also past conference presenters. I know many of us talk about ESL or ELT conferences and how important they are. But just like many of you have mentioned, building those relationships at those conferences, or if you see an awesome keynote speaker, or if you go to a really good session, get that person's contact information and just say, hey, can you repeat the same exact presentation for us? We have this and this and this to offer. So my first um, way that I like to find collaborators is to find friends of the organization. All right, so next is our trusted circle. And your trusted circle are people like 
who have already volunteered for you quite frequently that you know quite well. So a really good example I wanna talk about is the image in the center, our blogs. We have tons of blog writers who are dedicated blog ready for Tesla Ontario, but also outside blog writers who maybe um, are interested in something specific in the field and have some kind of expertise or knowledge on it. And so they write on something. And these people are great to reach out to to become future presenters because they already have knowledge on a certain area. And often it's as simple as asking, hey, can you turn this blog post into a webinar? Or can you turn this blog post into a Tesla dialogue session or maybe an exchange video? Can you explain the process you went through to do this one thing? So it's a really great and a simple way to recycle or reuse content. So you just change the medium. So next, um, and this is quite obvious, I mentioned earlier, your past webinar or Tesla Dialogue presenters, right? If they presented for a webinar, Tesla Dialogue is not that different. It's just that Tesla Dialogue is a lot more interactive and it's a lot more question-based, whereas a, we a webinar is more lecture-based. So if they're comfortable with presenting a webinar, why not ask them to do a Tesla Dialogue and vice versa? It's a really easy, simple way to get a presenter in that you know is of good quality and to get them in frequently. And lastly, um, guests that you've had on your other social media events. So earlier, Patrick talked about our four campaigns. And often what we do is if you've done one campaign and you liked it, we invite you to do several other ones, but we don't wait until you've done the first one. We often tell you about all four in the beginning so that once you've had this information and you know that there's other options and you feel good because you've done one already, you're probably more eager to do more with us. So that's in a nutshell, our trusted circle. We reach out to these people and we ask them, hey, do you want to participate with us? And often they say yes. All right, so next we have our outside sources. And when you think about outside sources, many of you mentioned social media. That's exactly what I think of too. It's those people who are outspoken on social media who tell you all about ELT, exactly what they're doing in their classroom. They discuss things like PBLA. If you don't know what that is, it's Portfolio Based Language Assessment in Canada. Or they're really passionate about EAP, English for Academic Purposes, and they really wanna to talk to you about it. Well, since those people already have sort of a platform and they're already comfortable with talking about something publicly, why not invite them to do some kind of presentation or participate in a social media event with you? Another thing that, um, another kind of type of person that's good to reach out to are topic experts or enthusiasts. So what I frequently do is I, I find a topic, for example, maybe I'm talking about literacy and I'll Google ESL literacy and I'll read blog posts and I'll read academic papers and I'll try my best to find people that I think align well with the mandate of our association. And often when I reach out to them by email, they're flattered, they already have the knowledge base and they're looking for opportunities to talk about what they're doing. People who are enthusiastic about topics love to share that enthusiasm with others. And so it's a really great way to not just make connections, but also potentially um, get deeper connections. For example, if they work at a university or if they work at another association or organization, you can sometimes partner with them, which can be really useful and really fun for both parties. And lastly, I mentioned a little bit about this earlier, but researchers in the field, somebody who's already researching ESL or ELT, particularly a niche that you know that your members always want to hear about, that is a great place to start. So for example, our members always love to hear things about settlement-based language learning or adult education, um, adult um, um, newcomers to, to Canada, we have this adult-based English language teaching. So that's a topic that's very popular with our members. And we always try our best to find different people who research this area, who can give us more insight and who can bring theory to practice or vice versa. So that's a really awesome way that we try and use outside sources. All right, and lastly, and my most favorite part, because I find the best people here are your hidden networks. So I want to talk about Grazia one more time. We actually came to know Grazia through Loretta. Loretta was one of our volunteers and she had known Grazia in the past. So because we asked Loretta to reach out to her network or her colleagues or whoever she knows, that's how we got access to Grazia. We would have never met her and she put on one of our best Tesla dialogue sessions yet. So that's a perfect example of using your hidden network. Sometimes you find gold mines that are absolutely amazing. Uh, another thing are your volunteers. A lot of our volunteers are so talented. Gunnell puts on webinars 
quite frequently for us and they're absolutely amazing. She does a lot of, about intensive reading. So thank you so much, Gunal. Paramita has also put on webinars or other conference sessions outside of our organization for things like TESOL um, Toronto. So often a lot of your volunteers are quite talented people. And if you ask them about what they'd like to present on, they'll tell you. So it's really important that we don't just see our volunteers as people who help us, but also as people who can present for us because they're awesome people that deserve to be highlighted all the time. And lastly, other organizations. If you see organizations with similar mandates or similar ideas or that support similar members, why not ask them if they'd like to collaborate? Sometimes you can find that certain organizations have affiliations with certain presenters. And so if you do a little bit of a swap, you can get new fresh presenters in that have really unique things to offer that you wouldn't know before. So this is just a couple of ways you can tap into your hidden network. All right, so now we have another Pear Deck question. What category do the majority of your presenters fall into? And remember, you're gonna choose it on Pear Deck, but if you're not in Pear Deck, you can also put your answer in the chat and I'll be reading it out loud. So A, friends of the organization, B, your trusted circle, C, outside sources, or D, your hidden network. Remember, some of these do overlap, so feel free to put more than one answer if you need to. So we'll give you a couple of uh, seconds to answer. Uh, yeah. So basically what Colleen said is it's all about community. We're building a community. We are reaching out to our community because the community will likely help, help you if you reach out. So reach out, why not? A couple of seconds. Awesome. So I'm gonna show the responses right now. Uh, so most people chose A, which is friends of the organization. Pretty good. Um, some people trust the circle, a little bit more people than outside sources, and one person has a hidden network. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great to know. So maybe consider trying these other methods too. A combination of all four gets you the best result. That's what I think. Yeah. Build, build your community. Why not? Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's move on. All right. So now um, I want to talk a little bit about providing incentive because sometimes people will tell me, oh, I'm having a dry spell. No one wants to present. And I don't think that's entirely true. So that's you to dangle, dangle something nice in front of them and they'll be more than eager to present. So something that's very important to us are the PD hours. So um, the reason why this is important is because our members who are accredited need a certain amount of hours to maintain their accreditation. And so to say that if you present, you get a certain amount of PD hours, that's a really nice thing that we can offer that doesn't cost our organization anything, but it is very valuable to a member. Next is an honorarium, and it depends on your budget, of course, but even something like $50 or a gift card can be really valuable to certain presenters. Uh, next is promotion of their social media or website. So for example, you can tell them, hey, when we post about your Tesla dialogue session or when we post your Tesla exchange video on YouTube, we'll also post your social media tags and we'll also put a link to your personal website and your blog. And it's a free way that they're getting promotion that they probably wouldn't have gotten before. We have almost 4,500 members. That's a big potential to get a lot more um, um, engagement that they had before. So it can be awesome, especially if someone is, for example, publishing a book or a textbook or things like that. And lastly, um, the opportunity to give back to their community. You know, hit them right where where it hurts in the heartstrings. And you say, you know, you've been around for some great time and you've been such a knowledgeable member of our community. We would really appreciate if you give back because you're so knowledgeable. And yes, we're stroking their ego, but it's true. If you look at your members, I guarantee you, you have some superstars you would have never known about. So it's important that you're, you're constantly keeping in contact and trying to figure out what kind of talents lie among your members because giving back to the community is how we get the community to feel needed and important and our presenters to feel like, hey, I did something great and I'm really proud to be a part of this organization. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the golden rules. And I like this little book image that we have here. It's almost like a, a little magic book, but it's true, right? When you want to get presenters, first of all, 
you have to make sure that you secure your presenters ASAP and that you always keep in touch with them. So what that means is, hey, if I want you to present in June, I might start reaching out to you in October, knowing that you're a busy person and knowing that you probably have your own schedule that you have to deal with. If I reach out to you October, you say, okay, I'll think about it. I follow up again with you in November. You say, hey, I have more time. Can we discuss this? We book a meeting in December. And by January, I have your webinar proposal posted to my website. It's a long run, right? If you're trying to get someone in two weeks, probably won't happen. But if you start months in advance, trust me, it's a lot less stressful. You have a better time to develop a relationship. And you can also show them examples. Hey, come to our next webinar. You could see exactly what it is that we're talking about. So ASAP, get in contact with them and keep in touch. Once you have their webinar posted, you know, you touch base with them every two months. How's it going? Are you preparing? You need any help? Have any questions? You let me know. It's really important that you keep that line of communication constantly open. And also, you want to make sure that you put out a call for presenters at least once a month across all your platforms. So that means on all your social media profiles, you say, hey, we're looking for TESOL exchange presenters. If you're interested, submit your proposal here. You can contact Pyramida for more information. And here's an example of a TESOL exchange video. So we do that at least once a month for all the different things that we run because you want it to always stay in the back of someone's mind. If I wanna present, I can present a TESOL exchange video. I see it coming up regularly. It reminds me, oh, I want to do that last month. Maybe I should do that this month, right? So it's always in front of their face. You're always talking about it. People are always aware that you're always looking for these different kinds of presenters or contributors. And next, speaking of that, once you post it on social media, don't have someone have to post, oh, where do I, where do I submit my proposal? It should already be there in a link. You should always have a public form that's accessible where everyone can submit their proposal fully. I mean, their name, their bio, um, what, what they want to present on, um, any affiliations that they have. Everything on that form when it comes to should be complete. So all you have to do is read over it and say yes or no. Paramita and I recently redid the Tesla exchange proposal because we found that afterwards we were asking way too much follow up questions and it became a little bit annoying to our presenters. So we redid our proposal form so that it was just a really smooth process. We ask you all these questions once, we don't bother you again. And it was really helpful in us maintaining a positive relationship with our presenters. Next, make sure that whatever it is that you are asking, um, like whatever event it is that you wanna run, there is clear information and expectations posted somewhere that is accessible and they'll know where to get to it, right? So before they get to that proposal form, you can have a page that says, this is what this event is. The presenter would be expected to do A, B and C and time commitment is about one hour one and a half hours, 15 minutes, but a practice rehearsal and a review of the, of the proposal or the presentation, something. Make it very clear what it is they have to be doing so that when the, by the time they get to you, they have a thorough understanding or you can refer them back to that page. It's really important that you don't bombard somebody after they say yes, okay, the presentation's two hours long, it's in two weeks, see you then. That would be absolutely awful. So don't do that to anybody. And lastly, give your presenters options. Just because they don't wanna do a webinar doesn't mean they wouldn't do a social media event with you. It's COVID, people are busy, people are tired, people are exhausted. So if you give options, for example, a webinar is one hour long and it requires you to make an entire presentation, but a TESOL exchange is only five to 15 minutes long with a much shorter presentation and more of a how-to video. But a TESOL a dialogue session is one and a half hours. However, it's only 10 questions that we have to come up with together. There's absolutely no other preparation. So you tell me, according to your schedule, which option would you like to do, right? You lay that all out in an email from the get-go. It takes the stress off of people. And you can tell them, hey, if you don't want to do it now, guess what? We're not booking until November. You have months ahead. And I can check base with you again in three months if you need me to, right? You give options, you clearly explain what it is that you need for them, and you ask them, do you want me to check back with you in two weeks? Do you want me to check back with you in three weeks? Do you want to let me know in a month? You make sure you open that communication and you really explain how things are being done. 
So those are my golden rules that I think have always worked when it comes to finding collaborators. All right, so now I have a question for you. After you've heard my big spiel, what are some things that you do to make your presenters comfortable during your social media events? Okay, so what are some things that you do to make your presenters comfortable during your social media events? So again, this is gonna be answered in Pear Deck, but if you don't have access to Pear Deck, you can always write your response in the chat below. Also guys, please let me know if I'm, a, if I'm speaking too fast. I am a notoriously fast speaker and I can always slow down if you need me to. Again, a lot of good answers. Well, I'm excited to see. I think making your presenter comfortable is one of the most important things that you can do, right? Because it just, it makes the quality of whatever you're doing so much better when people are comfortable and relaxed. 100%. I remember when I first started presenting for Tessa Ontario, um, that's exactly what they did. Well, they're like, don't worry, it's okay. I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. And now, now I'm doing this. <laughs> now yeah. I'm doing this. No, exactly. It's a process, right? It, it, that's what happens is that pe you're not sure why people want you to present. And then they say, hey, you know, this, this, and that, and that's great. And I want to bring you on here and give you a platform. And then you feel so flattered. So yeah. it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, yeah, that's true. And so I'm going to post your answers. Um, if you're still writing them down, that's okay. Continue writing. We'll just go through them here. So negotiate in advance and allow them to use what they are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Yes. Post flattering messages. Oh. <laughs> Make them feel comfortable and very flexible. Yes, mm -hmm. it's all about comfort. It really is. It really is all about people's comfort. Uh, we try to have a member accompany them during the process. Again, that's also about comfort, right? We try to yeah. make um, it comfortable for the presenter. Mm -hmm. Walkthroughs, rehearsals with the app, maybe Zoom, to make sure they know how to access, present, run through the script of who will do what. Yes, run-throughs are very important, very important. A welcoming attitude, natural chit-chat to break the ice, ensuring they have everything they need and flexible. Yes. Again, this is mostly about making the presenter feel comfortable, right? Yeah. Helping them feel like they, you know, like, all right, don't worry about it. You're good. The executive members make themselves available to assist the presenters in any way. Yes. They provide behind the scenes partner in Zoom so presenters does not have to focus on tech issues with the interface or users' tech questions only on the presentation and interaction. Introduce them to the member of the team to achieve familiarity. Mm -hmm. It's also comfort. Just be very clear about expectations and giving them tryout time. Create an ambience of trust. Oh, I like that word. An ambience of trust. I like that. <laughs> By being flexible, have to have information readily available ahead of time. I'm going to have to steal those words. Ambience of trust. <laughs> Be very welcoming and appreciative. Offer any assistance. Connect potential contributors with people in the organization who have similar interests. I love this attitude. No worries, there's a solution for every problem. Let them write their own. Provide constructive feedback along the way, assisting in shaping the presentation if the presenter is open to this. And finally, be supportive for them. So yes, it's all about um, providing this community, providing this um, comfort and letting them, it's all about letting them feel comfortable. It really is, it really is. This is awesome, great. So let's move on. 
Yeah, I agree. That was really awesome. Thank you, everybody. And that brings us into the last area we're going to talk about today. So how can you troubleshoot your social media events? It's all fine and dandy if you've done 10 events already, but if you haven't done anything on social media, it can be a little bit scary for the first time. So the first thing you want to think about is attendance. Like, are people actually going to come to this event? And that's really important because you want people there. You want whoever your presenter is or whoever your volunteers are or whoever's running the event to feel like they put in that work for something, right? And so one thing you want to do is make sure that you start promoting your event at least two months before the date of the event. If you have a regular monthly event like we do, promotion is continuous. It's always happening. But if it's a one-time thing, you need to make sure you're promoting at least two months in advance and you're promoting regularly, okay? The second thing you wanna do is make sure that you're promoting across all platforms. So if you have social media, every single social media platform you have, you should be posting this event regularly, okay? If you have a website, slap it on there. <laughs> if you you know put out newsletters, put it somewhere in the newsletter. If you have journals that, that your organization puts together, put it at the beginning or the end or in the middle, I don't care, but put it somewhere. You need to put it as many places as you can, as frequently as you can. Not to overdo it though, okay? And next, you have a network right? It's not just you by yourself. It's often you and maybe some other executive members, some other staff members, some other volunteers. So whoever is there that's with you that you can trust, ask them to share it with their networks, okay? So something that I frequently do if, if like we have an event that's low on attendance is I'll send it out to all our volunteers. I'll be like, hey, please, please, please share this. And once they share it, their friends will start to share or their colleagues will share it or maybe uh, their their fellow um, employees will share it. it it'll it'll get out there eventually okay so it's really important that you don't just think it's you by yourself you ask other people to share it and make sure they're sharing it from the original source they're sharing it from your social media or from your website okay um next make sure that your that your registration information is incredibly clear and that you're posting it frequently don't just post it two months before the event and say, okay, I've done my due diligence, I'm done, everyone's gonna know to come. No, 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 no. In, you know, in the months in, um, ahead, you don't have to post it as frequently, maybe twice a month, or maybe three times a month. But in the month before, every week that we get closer, post it more frequently. Four weeks, two, post it once. Three weeks, two, post it twice, right? Two weeks, two, you post it three times. And four weeks, two, you post it maybe four times. But you don't post it the same way. Sometimes you do a retweet or a reshare. Sometimes it's its own post. Sometimes you do a live where you're talking about it. Sometimes you put in your story. So it doesn't feel annoying. People are receiving it in different ways, but they're receiving the same information, right? So it's really important that you're sharing it frequently and the registration information is clear. Register here, colon, registration link. It's that simple. You don't need to put five paragraphs. I don't care. Give me the link. Let me get in there. Let me register. That's really important. And lastly, make sure that it's, it's very detailed what your event's going to be or what you're going to do at your event. Don't make someone guess what it is. Explain exactly what your event is and explain exactly what your presenter or what your um, subject matter expert or collaborator or contributor, explain exactly what they're going to be doing and what the, the audience members can expect from it, right? If you want your audience members to participate, say that. If you want them to just come and view it, say that. If there's gonna be a recording available afterwards, say that, give them all the information that they need so that there's no questions asked. This also saves you hundreds of emails being sent to you saying, what is this? How do I register? How do I get in? Who's the presenter? What do I have to do, right? It saves you a lot of time, but it also helps people to attend your event. So basically what I'm trying to say here is the more information you give out frequently in different interesting ways is probably the better attendance that you'll have at your online social media event. And one other thing too is utilize hashtags. That's important because I know because I because I, when I use social media, I don't necessarily follow people, but I follow hashtags. Mm -hmm. So if you use the correct hashtags or use any hashtags is relevant to your field, um, you might be able to get that attendance by that hashtag. So again, I don't follow uh, people per se, but I follow hashtags on some of my platforms. So yes. hashtags important. So important. So important. So important. 
<laughs> All right. So here's our next question for you. What issues have you ran into during your online events? And if you haven't done social media events yet, you could talk about maybe, maybe your webinars, maybe your online conference if you've done it. But anything you've done online, what kind of issues have you ran into? And remember, you're going to respond to this question in Pear Deck. If anyone needs a link, please just let me know. But if you can't be bothered to get into Pear Deck, you can also put your responses in the chat and I'll read it out loud. And don't, like, you probably saw this too. Don't worry about the anonymity. Um, everyone's answers are anonymous. So if you had a lot of problems, don't worry. <laughs> we don't know. We won't know who, you, know are. who you are. Yeah. We don't know who you are. So be honest. That's fine. Maybe I'll just read out the answers while people are still writing. Continue to write if you're still writing. That's fine. Don't Good worry. idea. Mm -hmm. I'll just, yeah. So a lot of technical hiccups. Uh-oh. <laughs> Convincing people to pay for online conferences. Oh, that's mm -hmm. uh, presenter not showing up on time. Technical issues. Oh no, power interruptions. That's that can happen. Yes. Presenters yeah. um having issues with internet connections. Technology failing and the need for a plan B. Technology fails are, are pretty common. Uh, people want them to be longer. Yes. Uh, function, keep it. Uh, weather, tech problems, people don't understand the platform, tech fails. Uh, facilitate actual discussions is difficult. Yes, that's, that could be difficult. <laughs> uh, oversaturation of Zoom events. And that's why we have, you know, different events and different. Christmas not knowing the camera is on. Oh, that can be super embarrassing. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's not. Um, you you can it, see some stuff you don't want to see. Oh, I've seen stuff that I don't want to see. I'm not. I'm just gonna say that. But that's it. That's it. <laughs> and it's been surprisingly smooth and easy. Really stressful, but be sure. To Run, but surprisingly, not many problems. We need to talk nice. to that person. Yeah, this person's oh. an expert. I know. We need to talk to you. Please send us an email. All right. So the presenter could not get back to us on a Zoom session. Oh, this might awesome. have been Loretta, and I was there, and it was really sad and scary. Oh no, Loretta. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. Lots of people registered. Presenters excited, but low turnout on the actual event. Oh, good. Assessing so the sessions, not being able to help attendees as fast as we would like. Some presenters take longer than they should. Zoom fatigue, I get that. Microphone, sure. Um, speakers disconnected due to poor net connectivity. Yes. Not knowing if the presentation is going well because it's not very interactive or engaging. Yes, yes. You don't see a lot of the attendees. That's mm -hmm. true. Like in my, in my classroom specifically, I don't know that they're there. Um, our events happen seasonally, mostly March, April, May. So we need a balanced early promotion with focus promotion, not yeah. getting adverts out there early enough. So yes, so thank you all for your answers. Yeah. Um, yes, those are all some legit um, tech issues. Okay, we have five minutes left. And for the sake of time, I'm going to speed through this. Don't worry, you're going to all get access to this presentation and you can always contact Patrick or I afterwards. So um, to troubleshoot your event, these, these are the logistics of your event, okay? First of all, get your presenters as early as possible. Um, have them book that date out market in their calendar and you know, just make sure they're aware that they're presenting, you keep in touch with them. Second of all, you need to clearly outline what the presenter expectations are. What are you asking of them? What do they have to do at the live session? What do they have to create or produce? Is there a run through? Is there a practice? Do they have to give you their presentation ahead of time? It's really important that they are aware of all that you need from them and that you've clearly communicated that. 
and make sure they just know what your event is, right? You don't want somebody coming to a live Q&A session thinking it's a webinar and preparing an entire presentation because first of all, they wasted their time. And second of all, they may not feel confident if they didn't know what they were preparing for. And lastly, backup support. Listen, whenever we have an event for the first time, all of us has the Ontario squad. We all roll out to that event. All our volunteers, all of our staff members, all of our, our community support, we're all there in, in um, the session. So that if something does go away, we jump in and say, hey everyone, how's your day going? Oh, I love that dress. Oh, nice necklace. But that community support is important, right? You get someone who's knowledgeable on the software you're using. For example, Instagram. The first time we did Instagram Live, Patrick and I were both there, plus tons of our volunteers, just in case things didn't go the way we thought it was gonna go right? Our first um, webinar on Zoom, it was us and the entire volunteer team plus our webinar attendees. The reason why it was our first time, if something went left, we wanted help. So have your backup support there, especially in the early days. As you move on, you can start to build custom roles where you have a main person, a support person. But in the early days, as many people there as possible, where they know if things go left, we do A, B, or C, have that in place. And next slide, please, Patrick. I just want to get to this quickly. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, um, if you're having a, an, a, an event that requires a rehearsal, make sure you do all these things. Not all events require rehearsals. For example, on Twitter, we have our Twitter chats. We don't do a rehearsal. What we do is if our presenter needs it, we meet with them on Zoom. We share a screen and show them how to retweet, how to tweet something out, how to share a link on Twitter, et cetera. So it's not a rehearsal but it's a meeting where we discuss, this is how you do A, B, and C. Now you show me how you do it. Okay, do you feel comfortable? Yes, okay, make sure you use this hashtag, right? So not all events can have a rehearsal, but you can always meet with your presenters in a Zoom room like this, where you can talk about what's gonna happen, show them exactly what you want them to do and ask them to show you back, right? So if you're going to be doing something where it, there's voice or sound or video, you need to check equipment. You'll notice today I have on my headset, right? I always wear this headset when I'm doing important things because my computer has audio, but the quality that you hear is much better with this. And before I came on, I did a sound check on myself. I turned on my video. I made sure I just said, I have a ring light. I make sure that you can see me properly. I'm well lit, especially because of my skin tone. I want you to be able to see me, my facial expressions, right? Um, when it comes to your presentation, how long is it? If it's like today where it's time, did I, you see I'm rushing? It's because I have a certain time to finish this off. If it's not timed, right? Like a Tesla exchange. If it was supposed to be five minutes and it went 10 minutes, that's okay. Because it's recording. It's going to go on YouTube. That's fine. But a live event, it's really important that you get your timing down packed. They know if I don't have time, skip this slide, right? If I run out of time, I'm not going to do this Q&A session or I'm not going to talk about this topic, right? And next, your audience insights. Tell your presenters what your audience likes. You know your audience, right? You know that they love talking about this topic. They hate this topic. They don't like fast talkers like me. They like slower people who talk clearly and enunciate their words. They like images. They don't like too much words on the screen, right? They don't, you have to have accessibility also when you think about presentations, right? Can you clearly read what's going on on the screen? Or are my words jumbled into the image behind it because the colors are too similar, right? Is someone who's hard of hearing gonna have a good time at my presentation? You have to consider these kinds of things. And lastly, engagement tools. Like today, this entire presentation is interactive. You can scroll through, you can ask questions. We're looking at the chat, we're listening to you. We're talking about your names out loud because we want you to be involved in this presentation. It's not Patrick and Mai's presentation. It's all of our presentations today, right? We're all involved. We're all talking to each other because we're all a part of this community. We want you to feel a personal connection. So when you leave today, you're like, damn, I like those people. I wanna go back again next time. I want you to feel that way. So things like polls, True or false, open-ended questions, fill in the blanks, um, multiple choice, do those, do those frequently. Every five minutes, do something to have people in your chat do, like talking and relating back to you, okay? Always, it's 9.30, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jim, can we take like one or two questions if that's okay? You let us know, Jim. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so if there's any questions in the chat, maybe just let us know and I can read it out to Patrick or vice versa. Yeah. So follow us on social media. There's a social media. Yeah. And these are our emails. Yeah. Okay, so I don't see any questions yet. So that maybe is a good sign. 
Um, so yes, if you need anything from us, you can just scan the QR code, takes you right to our LinkedIn pages. And here are our emails to reach out to us. We're more than happy to collaborate. As we said earlier, Patrick is an awesome guy when it comes to ideas and creativity. And we just love to get to know other people. So please, please feel free to reach out to us. Well, thank you very much, Colleen yeah. and Patrick. That was a very informative session. Um, you know, and I think it's very uh, timely too with everybody being online. Uh, it's that much more difficult to engage with members, but you've definitely found a way. Uh, and it's neat to hear about all of the ways that you can sort of target in, uh, you know, different niche groups within, uh, you know, the larger membership with uh, all the different platforms uh, that you're using. So thank you for going through all of that with us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime, anytime. Okay, um, why don't we take uh, like a, just a one or, or two minute uh, break just to, to stretch our legs uh, and to uh, get a little exercise and then we'll come back uh, for our sort of 2020 uh, presentations in just a second. So take one or two minutes and then we'll come back for, for that in just a minute. <laughs> 